Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 uh, TV Shows of 2020. So this is an annual video that I've been doing for quite some time now where I count down 10 uh, seasons of television in the past year, um, which from my uh, count down my 10 favorites um, and get to my favorite shows of the year. Now, um, so I have the same rules that I have every year is that to be considered a 2022 year it needs to the show needs the season needs to end in 2022 and that's I know that doesn't really keep in line with like the popular way of doing things but it needs to do that be that way because I need to see the entire season in order for me to consider it and I can't see the entire season if it didn't finish this year so therefore shows that made us start it last year but then I didn't end till this year which I'm not sure if there are any to be honest but if there are um, they had to be they couldn't be considered last year they had to be withheld for this year and um, actually and I don't think there's any shows I'm currently watching that haven't and yet that will be withheld till next year but whatever so <laughs> those are my standard rules uh, as there always are every year now I will say looking at my top 10 this year and comparing it to last year it's a much much stronger year than last year last year um i had uh trouble like fitting in enough like great shows like you know how i give a rating for every season uh um between one and ten and ten being the best and last year there was a couple sevens that made my top ten which usually doesn't happen but i didn't have enough good like eight nines and tens to fill the the top ten but this year it was actually tough fitting in everything and there are no sevens not even in my honorable mentions <laughs> um and uh it was tough even fitting some eights in my top 10 there was there were so many nines uh this year so many good shows so for me in my opinion anyway it was a much stronger year so it was a much it was much harder to nail these things down which is a shame because some of these shows like um I wanted to put higher, but there, there was too much competition. But anyway, uh, before I get into my top 10, a few other year-end wrap-up things I want to do. I have typically been doing a top three most disappointing shows of the year. However, the past couple of years, I just did one show for most disappointing because I didn't have enough to fill the top three. Well, this year I have four <laughs> so uh it's funny on the one end it was a really really strong uh year but at the same time i got more disappointing shows for this year so let me first start by getting that out of the way um so um my top four most disappointing shows of uh 2022 i'll start with my number four uh which is the boys season three um I felt like it just kept going on and on, and I was I, it was disappointing to me because I wasn't expecting much of the season when I first started it, but it actually started really strong, got me really interested in the characters, I was really into it, but for me, they created this situation uh, where... Homelander needed to die in order to satisfy the plot, and they weren't willing to do that. In fact, they were just being very non-committal. Nothing actually happened. There was no character growth, no story growth, and so I was extremely disappointed in the ending, and for, frankly, I think I'm going to give up on this show. I have no interest in watching it further. Next most disappointing show of the year, number three, is The Old Man, season one. Now, I haven't actually heard of it, so I didn't have any expectations when I first started watching. I just knew it was a, um, uh, God, what's the, the dude from The Big Lebowski? Jeff Bridges. I knew he was in it, and it was like a Born Identity type action spy intrigue thriller thingy. And so I don't have high expectations for that. But why it's on my list for disappointing you because the show was so good. It had me, I thought it was going to make my top 10 uh, watching most of the season because it was just such a great character story. It was super intense. Uh, seeing um, the, the backstory of this character, this. Uh, ex-CIA agent who's um, being hunted now as an old man um, 
But the problem is, and why I'm going to say it's most disappointing and why it didn't make my top 10 is because the ending sucked. And the reason why the ending sucked is because it wasn't finite. Because they left it open-ended for season 2, which more than any show, I think this was a huge, huge, huge mistake that ruined the entire show for me, quite frankly, that they didn't end the story with the season. For me, it should have been a self-contained uh, season. Now, I do know it's based off of books, and I haven't read them. Maybe some people read the books. Well, we couldn't end it here because there's more books. I don't care. I'm just judging the show at, by itself on its own merits, and on its own merits, it would have been a great story if they wrapped it up. They could have, and not only did they not wrap it up, but uh, the twist ending was dumb, and it's leading into a different storyline in season two, which I have zero interest in, so I don't think I'm going to bother watching it. I think the show's ruined for me because they didn't end it. So <laughs> next, we'll get into my number two, Russian Doll season two. I, unlike others, wanted a season two of Russian Doll. I wasn't disappointed. I didn't think it was a self-contained season that stood on its own. That there's no reason to have a season two. I wanted a season two. I think it needed a season two. And I think these characters are great. And watching season two at first, it was great seeing them again in their interactions. But they didn't do anything with them. The plot was ultimately extremely boring, particularly when compared to the, compared to the first season. And yes, it was great seeing these characters with... Uh, again, but they could have done much better things. They didn't utilize them uh, properly at all, and it was just, it was so hollow compared to the first season. And so now let me get into my number one most disappointing show of 2022, and that, of course, obviously, is Star Trek Picard <laughs> Season 2, which not only was the most disappointing show of 2022, it's very, very extremely easily the worst show of 2022. It's extremely disappointing, even though my expectations coming into this were not very high to begin with because I wasn't that impressed with Season 1 of Picard, although Season 1 of Picard, Picard seems more like a masterpiece when compared to season two because it, it was just a mixed bag where this was some of the worst writing I've ever seen in any show ever. It was so nonsensical and yeah I will say it is the worst season of Star Trek ever made. Easily for me. Easily. And um, I, I have unlike my sister I have no problem comparing it to other seasons. I don't mind it has less episodes just telling one story. I, I still find it very easy to compare it to other seasons and to me, this is easily way worse than anything Star Trek has done before. This is just a complete disaster. So that is my number one worst uh, show of... Um 2022 or most disappointing and worst anyway um before i get into my top 10 i'm gonna delay even further and uh do another uh, award which i don't think I've, I've done for movies before but i'm not sure i've done in my top 10 shows before but that's gonna be my most overrated show of the year and if you've seen my review for this show it was the title of that video was entitled the show is overrated, so you probably know what I'm talking about, and that is Star Wars Andor Season 1. I mean, not this was a bad show, it wasn't absolutely terrible. I wouldn't say, it definitely wouldn't make my disappointing list because it's actually better than I thought it would be because I wasn't expecting anything because it was a prequel to a prequel movie that I didn't really care about and something that no one was asking for, so I didn't expect much from it. And so it was better than what I would expected it to be, but then everyone online was making this out like this is the greatest thing ever made, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, this is the best Star Wars property ever made since the first one for the original trilogy, and I'm sorry, but I simply do not see it. Now, a lot of the praise they give and then the reasons why they praise the show, I agree with. I agree it was great to see it more realistic and more gritty, I agree with the social commentary, so I do agree with all the positive their listings, but for me, I think that the show was f way too boring, way too much filler, way too dragged out. I, I talked about this in my review. I think that if the show was half the length, it was six episodes instead of 12 episodes, then it could have been as great as everyone's saying. But because it was just too, it wasn't 
paced well. It wasn't written well as far as pacing goes. There was too many, there's several unnecessary characters I did not care about at all and just should have been cut out of the show entirely. And some storylines like the prison one that should have, that served no purpose and should have been cut out entirely. So, um, it was okay, but n not the masterpiece that everyone is. So I needed to mention this as the most overrated show of the year. Now, let me get into my top 10 uh, best episodes, uh, best seasons, sorry, best shows of the year. And I'm going to delay even further by starting off with a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make my top 10 list. Uh, the first honorable mention is Star Trek Discovery Season 4. And I'm actually really, this is one thing I'm really disappointed that this is only on honorable mention because I do believe this is the best season of Discovery yet. And it's funny because uh, Season 3 of Discovery made my top 10 last year, but that only got a 7 out of 10 where this gets an 8 out of 10. And it only made my top 10 because there wasn't as many good shows last year where this year there's a lot of more good shows so it was harder to make my uh top 10 even though i really wanted it to because of any season of discovery deserved to make my top 10 it was this one uh it wasn't perfect it had pacing issues for sure again this is another example of the show that had too many episodes it had like 12 or 13 where it should have had eight um so there was a lot of filler and the story dragged out a bit but i think compared to previous seasons this had a much better structure of uh, because usually they fail at these mystery stories these mystery box stories they actually did a really good job with this and usually the ending is is just a bunch of cgi explosion nonsense but this ending was actually really good, really strong, staying true to Star Trek and the themes of making peace and trying to understand what is uh, alien and not understandable. I think it did actually some of the best job of any Star Trek of doing this kind of type of storyline. Um, yeah, if maybe they fixed the pacing a bit, this actually would have cracked my top 10. So, next honorable mention on my list is Westworld Season 4. Now... For the most, at the beginning of season four, I just I thought this was the shoe in for my top five, let alone my top ten. Um, I did have some issues with the time jump they did in between seasons. It did alienate me from some of the characters a bit, but they had some the mid season. They had this mid season shocking episode, like the mid season like shock that um, was amazing, absolutely amazing. Some of the best. I've seen in television some of the best storytelling. The acting was really top notch, and the way they explored these characters really got to me. Why it didn't quite make my top 10 is only an honorable mention is because of the ending I don't think worked. I was not happy with the ending. The ending felt like a letdown after how strong uh, the earlier parts of the season was and the reveal with one of the characters at the end I thought was really disappointing. And... Now we know that's going to be end of the show entirely because it's been cancelled where I feel like it's a very bad ending for the show. And I honestly feel like if they ended the show after season 3 that would have been a much better, much stronger ending for the show as a whole. Whereas this one, it's uh, it had set up this storyline that was basically gone unresolved or you could come up with your own story in your head for it. Um, but... I didn't like it <laughs> and they could have done something and if had they had another season they could have done something with it that would have retroactively made me like it if they explain, explained it you know expanded it upon it but as it is I don't think it's good <laughs> I think it's a bad ending so um but I do have to mention as I will mention as the best of the year because that beginning in the middle of the season was so damn strong so, next honorable mention on my list is A Lord of the Rings, of The Rings of Power, Season 1. This is kind of the opposite thing, <laughs> because it started off 
very sort of poorly, very kind of dragging the story out way too long. You want to talk about a season with bad pacing. Um, this kept giving the audience, or at least me, the feeling of get to the fucking point. <laughs> like, it takes forever to it's just dragging along with all this filler. It's like, yes, 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 but where are you going with this? Uh, where there's not many other shows this year where I had that feeling with but. As I said, it's kind of the opposite of Westworld because it, the ending saved it for me. The ending was extremely powerful, and I thought the reveal they had was absolutely marvelous. Um, that and was done extremely well, and so for me, it kind of justified the season as a whole, even though I still felt it dragged on a bit. And there was a couple storylines, such as the Elrond and Doran thing, that were solid throughout the entire season for me. So that's what really held it up, so that I gotta at least mention it as an honorable mention. So now, finally we come to the point. <laughs> the title of the video will get to my top 10 best shows of 2022. And we'll start with my number 10 Star Trek Prodigy Season 1. Um, oh, this is one that started last year because they dragged it out for... Had a ridiculously long break, really. They could have, should have called it two separate seasons, but whatever. We get a 20-episode season with two halves. And, um... I wasn't thinking I'd put this in my top 10 for most of it because there were some strong parts, but there are also some parts that really, really bothered me. Uh, and the first half of the season was when they completely ignored the, the realities of geography of the quadrant of the galaxy that they set up and was traveling willy nilly and making no freaking sense. And yes, the super star drive, whatever they had, didn't explain it. Don't give me that. And I don't even want to hear excuses for it. They're just BS. Anyway. <laughs> And then in the second half of the season, they had this really sitcom-y contrived moment. There was a huge misunderstanding that led to hijinks that could have cl been cleared up if any one person at any time just said something, and that irritates the hell out of me. And I've, honestly, after that last one, I thought I would give up on the show entirely because that really irritated me, but somehow... The show actually managed to redeem itself with an ending that was absolutely amazing and in retrospect justified uh, all of the character stories they've been doing. And in fact, um, watching other kids shows recently, having stayed with some friends with kids, I realized just how much better <laughs> this show is than most of the kids shows out there. And just not only does it look amazing, but it's uh, the character stories they tell uh, really work in the long term storytelling works better than frankly, Discovery or Picard and I would say that this is probably my third favorite modern Star Trek show behind uh, Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds I'd say overall it's better than Discovery and Picard but that's just me anyway we will get into my number 9 favorite show of the year and that is Moon Knight Season 1 now, Moon Knight is another example of a show kind of undone by its finale. This could have ended up much higher on my list had it not be been for the finale, which I felt should have been three episodes instead of one, and that it felt extremely rushed and more of like a big Marvel showdown <laughs> rather than staying true to, to what the show had set up previously. But... Despite all that, um, this show I thought was absolutely delightful, absolutely amazing. So, uh, Oscar Isaac was absolutely uh, amazing in this role. And then you had some really powerful uh, moments like the episode that dealt with his backstory, which had me in tears. And I think some of the best drama I've seen. They had that amazing support character. Uh, I can't even remember her name at the moment, but she was actually more, like the highlight of the show for me. Um, and the intriguing way that they set up the start of the season with, uh, you know, the way they put you in the mindset of someone who was going insane or who was only living half a life and didn't know what was going on. And then the reveal that, spoiler, 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 they did at the end of the season, which was so good. So... 
despite yes they could have handled this like the end last episode of the show better should have been actually three more episodes but still an amazing season absolutely so next we'll get into my number eight um which is the peripheral season one now this show i had just heard of like right when it was advertised when it came out it was on amazon prime and it was uh advertised as uh based off of a william gibson novel and uh done by the uh, creators of uh westworld so I thought I'd give the show a try, and at first I thought, well, this is kind of just an average sci-fi thriller action show, and there's really not much more to it. I thought it would be a lot more mind-bendy being coming from the creators of Westworld. But then by the time I got to the end of the season, I was so confused. I had to watch <laughs> watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos explaining to me what the hell is actually going on. So yeah, it did eventually get really mind-bendy and twisty, and so I really got into it as the show went on. I think maybe if you're starting it for the first time, maybe you'll be underwhelmed by the first couple episodes just like I was, but I would say stick with it because it actually gets better and you get the um, involved with the characters and you get this really complex, maybe, maybe a bit too complex of world building because it's still beyond my head, but I, I actually found a lot of these William Gibson uh, cyberpunk novels to kind of be like that um but yeah I, i've really gotten into it i'm really anticipating uh season two and i did think it was a really really strong powerful ending to the season so next um we will get into my number seven which is undone season two now it's funny because i keep track of all the shows i watch during the year as i'm watching them and then this show came out fairly early in the year and at one stage it was like my number three uh, and there were still a lot of shows but it was just because so many more good shows came out where now it's got pushed all the way down to number seven kind of disappointing now undone i don't know a lot of people probably hadn't heard of this show unless they heard me talk about it because it's not as popular as it should i often compared it to russian doll because it did come out the same around the same time as season one and season one of this show came out around the same time as season one of russian doll and season two <laughs> came out around the same time but this is where seasons one of both these shows were very really similar where it's about this really eccentric a uh, woman who's got a really quirky attitude um, dealing with some time travel nonsense and in general that's pretty much where the similarities end but in general that's that's what these two shows are similar about however in season one both shows I would say are near equal quality they were both really good really powerful whereas as far as season two goes this one far 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 excels where Russian Doll failed in fact, the season two is kind of similar to their season two because it also deals with them exploring uh, the past of one of their parents and actually time traveling into the past to experience what their parents went through and understand them better. But whereas when they did in Russian Doll, it was so boring <laughs> and I couldn't really care that much about it. But when they did it in Undone, it was really exciting and um, a great character exploration. And of course, seeing Bob Odenkirk, well, seeing him, yeah, I suppose is rotoscope, so I did see him, <laughs> and more of hearing his voice, uh, it was really great, um, and, and he was really great in this role, and, um, it's funny because season one of Undone it kind of ended in a way that that some people were a bit iffy about. Um, I was a bit iffy about it myself, but season two like corrected that immediately. It started right off the gate by fixing that mistake and telling a really great story. But then it kind of makes that same mistake at the end of season two again. And I was like, ugh. So that's why that's why it got pushed down on the number seven because that final little ending thing was not, wasn't the biggest fan of that. But the bar of the last ten minutes of the final episode, the rest of the season was gold. It was really strong. It has that mind-bendy, mind-twisty stuff that I particularly love to death done correctly so next we'll move over to my number six 
which is Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3. Now, just until like last week, this was in my top 5. I'm a bit disappointed it got pushed out of my top 5 at the last second. But, um, this, yes, for me, this was easily the best season of Lower Decks. Um, I th and other seasons of Lower Decks had ranked around the same number, I think, like six. Whereas I think this deserved to be much higher than the previous season. But since it was such a good year, that wasn't quite to be. But, um, yeah, the I was worried that the show would run into stagnation and that they would, the characters would just be running the loops and repeating the same things, kind of like I complained about with the boys. But they actually managed to avoid that. They managed to keep the characters fresh. They managed to change them up, to throw things at them, to keep these long-term stories character story arcs going even throughout the episodic episodes and the outrageous comedy which was still as always on point this year as it always is but even more so in in some regards but what really makes this the best season of the year or of the show is the um character stories that were truer and really paid off um they had amazing they do like fan service and nostalgia but while tying it into the story and making a great story out of it so they do it correctly is what i'm saying like the visiting deep space nine i'm still absolutely in all of that that thing that was absolutely amazing and then the revisiting other aliens that were that the enterprise encountered in the next generation like and they do this stuff well while maintaining strong characters in fact improving on the character stories this year more so than previous years so that is my number six star trek lower decks season three so now it is time for me to get into my top five favorite shows of the year and as i said this is hard to boldly down because these are all amazing shows and we will start with my number four five i guess it's five it's hard to say sometimes i was thinking of pushing this up to four or three i don't know it's hard because i just watched the show but i think i'll put it here at number five and that is severance now i typically don't have apple tv apple plus tv or whatever you call it and i usually don't want to get it because i have way too many streaming services as it is uh, so even though the show came out earlier in this year i didn't watch it until just last week and that's because on my flight over to new zealand um they had these first three episodes of the show for free so i was like oh, whatever i'll watch these first three episodes see if it's good it was amazing uh, it was really good so then I, when i got here i was like well i gotta get apple plus at least long enough to watch the rest of the show because i need to see the season and i watched it and it was the rest of the season was even better like it it blew me away so it was such um an amazing concept of um, people who work at this corporation and then when they go to work there they agree to have their memories kind of their lives basically kind of halves while well, while they're at work they have no memory of their life outside of work but while they're at home they have no memory of their life inside of work so it actually essentially creates a new person who lives their entire life working and knows nothing outside of the work environment which is really cruel and messed up when you think about it and it's and they really explore this really well with really great and strong characters and they it is a bit weird sometimes like really weird but weird in the way that i like um and and they have a lot of great commentary about the exploitation of workers and and corporate culture as it relates to modern day that i think is very powerful and potent and then the the season just kept getting stronger and stronger as it went to this finale that like had me completely on the edge of my seat that was i think one of the best finales i've seen so <coughs> yeah i was kind of thinking about putting this higher but i think i will put it at number five uh severance so then i'll get into my number four uh, best show of the year and that is Star Trek Strange New Worlds season one now again I wanted to put this higher <laughs> because to me this is easily the best season of modern Star Trek yet 
easily. Um, it had 10 episodes, and there was like one or two mediocre episodes, but outside of that, every episode was completely powerful, completely strong. The ongoing character arcs it had, even through episodic storytelling, was so good, done so right. Every character was unique. Every character was interesting. You loved to see the different interactions between these characters. And it did it in a way that um, no other modern Star Trek show has really captured. I think Lower Decks has come the closest, maybe Prodigy in their own childlike way. But um, definitely not Discovery of Picard. It's completely... Um, blew those shows away with just how well it was written, how great these characters were, how interesting these characters were, and the bond between the characters, while at the same time having a ten different unique and in their own right very interesting and powerful stories, usually with a little something to say. Um, so, yes, <laughs> this is the best Star Trek we've gotten this this millennia this this century i would say um <coughs> so really great to see star trek strange new world season one so um next i'll move over to my number three which is house of the dragon season one now this is a show i had no idea i would put this this high in fact i didn't i had if you asked me at the start of the year if you if i thought this show would make my top 10 i would be like no way it's not going to because the ending of game of thrones i cannot understate how bad of a taste that left in my mouth because i to this day can't really go back and watch earlier episodes of game of thrones because the ending just ruined the entire show for me even though that was my favorite show that's what i originally built my entire channel on and i was so in love with that show and called it the best show ever made and now i have a hard time even watching it because it ended so badly and so when they said they were going to do a spinoff, I was like, ugh, because I thought it would be more of the same, more of a continuation of the crap that uh, was the final two seasons of that show. So I was surprised to learn that this was actually a really, really good show. I uh, managed to recapture um, the intrigue that I loved so much from Game of Thrones, but do it in a different way and be a different kind of show that's more focused on one location and a certain set of characters. And again, the characters were all very well uh, drawn. Um, drawn out really well thought out uh really well portrayed really strong character stories which as i said is always my favorite thing about the show so in some ways i actually like it kind of better than game of thrones because this show at least is not tarnished by an horrible ending although it did try to remind me of that ending a couple times which i didn't appreciate and there were a couple of things in the season that didn't quite work but overall, it was an amazing season of television, and it got me really right back into the world of Westeros, which I did not think was possible. And I am so anticipating the next several seasons. Uh, and I just, it's just such a strong story that they're telling, and I think they're doing a better job at adapting the story uh, than uh, Game of Thrones did. So that is my number three, House of the Dragon. So next, we will get into my top two uh, favorite shows of the year. And uh, again, this is a really, really hard choice between these two shows. <laughs> I was going back and forth on this. But um, I'll start with my number two, which I think really, really deserved to be my number one. And that is Better Call Saul Season 6. And I think it's a shame it only ended up at number two because... Uh, Better Call Saul has never made my number one before, and I thought if any season deserved to do it, it was this one. Uh, Better Call, I think it's made my number three or four, so maybe two is the highest it got. Um, but it's always in my top five. Every time there's, every year that there's a season of Better Call Saul, it is in my top five. Usually my number three or four. Or, yeah, and uh, this time I really wanted it to be my number one. 
but almost there. And uh, because this was the final season, which was easily the best season, uh, which has followed the same format of Breaking Bad of getting better every season <laughs> that it went, and it also followed the format of Breaking Bad by having an extremely powerful ending and one of the best series finales ever made. Um, this more than Breaking Bad, though, was a strong character story. <coughs> Um, even though Breaking Bad was great at telling strong character stories, this was more focused on the character stories. This was mainly the point in the way they explored uh, Jimmy McGill slash Saul Goodman was absolutely amazing and went in directions that I didn't quite expect it to go. And with a finale that went in a direction I didn't expect, but told like a full story that like justified the entire show which is exactly what a great series finale is supposed to do and it just did it so well uh so it's definitely one of the best uh seasons of television out there and i really wanted to give it number one but i had to give my number one slot to another show that had its final season that was an amazing final season that justified the entire show <coughs> and that is of course the expanse season six as my number one favorite show of 2022 now um if you're familiar at all with my channel my top tens i've done in the past the expanse has gotten number one pretty much every time, <laughs> at least in the past couple of years. Uh, it's always been my number one of the year. And I think this this one more with good reason. Like, if you would, if Better Call Saul Season 6 had come out the same year as The Expanse Season 5, then it would have beat it out easily. And it would have been my number one of that year instead of The Expanse Season 5. But The Expanse Season 6 probably is one of my favorite seasons of television of all time uh might even be my favorite season of the expanse very beating out in season two because i think the fact that it was a shorter season it was something that everyone was worried about but i think it was to its strength because it had less filler than previous seasons i practically had no filler to be honest um and it was more a tight a tighter story and more to the point and it was a great send-off to all these characters, even if they do somehow adapt the final three books. This uh, this season will still stand as a great send-off to this part of the story, because the next part of the story tells a different story. Um, and so it, it sends it off in an amazing way um, by to, uh, exploring these characters like pretty much all the main characters uh and the one of the strongest uh ways that this show has ever done and by telling a very very um strong and satisfying conclusion to the battle between earth mars and the belt that's been going on since the first episode and so and it did it in such a satisfying way i think personally this season is the show's magnum opus and i know not a lot of people agree with me a lot of people seem to be disappointed in season six but i don't agree with that mindset i think season six is the expanse at its best and the expanse is frankly one of the best if not the best show ever to air so that is my number number one favorite show of 2022 the expanse season six so that's it for my top 10 favorite shows of 2022 thanks so much for watching this video uh, be sure to check out my channel as I cover many of the shows mentioned in this video and many other more shows at the moment covering Star Trek, all things Star Trek, doing Star Trek the original series at the moment and we'll be covering Star Trek Picard Season 3 reluctantly <laughs> when that comes out later this year and of course more many more great shows that are to come this year will be on my channel so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that and thanks a lot for watching.